E because now you have the payment, which is negative, and then the invoice is applied out to show the, the amount of the invoice that has not yet still been applied out. So, so even though this is wrong, that it's a negative receivable, it's actually kind of easier to see than up here, uh, than up here, right? That's, that's kind of one of the problems with these, with the sub ledgers. And if I go into the sub ledger for the open prepayments, you can see now here's where you have the detail, right? So on the unearned revenue, there's the, the 188.56, and then it went down by that 37.71. We do have this issue with the date, which probably wouldn't be an issue if you were working in real time, but I can see that could cause you problems if you can't change that date, if you're going back and trying to fix something or something like that because it's locked in. So let's do, an, let's, and if I go internally, if I go into my customer center, internally, it looks pretty straightforward because now we still have the estimate to the sales order uh, to the, and then the payment and then the invoice being applied out looks great. But then again, we have these two journal entries down here. And, and again, I would think maybe the reason they, they wanted two journal entries and a clearing account is that you can see them both down here. So in other words, why do they need a clearing account instead of just doing this, right? They, they added another journal entry in there, which you wouldn't need from a debit and credit standpoint. I think it has something to do, of course, with the sub ledgers and to be able to track this information out internally. So you can see those two journal entries net out. It's bothersome to look at. It looks less clean than uh, over, over here, this method where you don't have those journal entries. We had these three payments that were tied out but it's not too bad because they, they knit out against each other. Also, if I go to my lists drop down and I go into my chart of accounts and I look at my include inactive accounts, here's that clearing account that they set up, the account for prepayment transfer. So if I go into that, there you have uh, the transfers. And again, the thing, is, the thing that's kind of annoying is it's not allowing me when it makes that journal entry to change to change the date, right? That date is being tied into the current date that the transaction's happening rather than the date uh, the date that we made the invoice, <laughs> which seems kind of weird to me. I would think that would be a kind of an issue. I would, I don't think that's exact, but that's how it is right now. So that's, so they might change. I would think they might change that because I think that feel like that's something's wrong with that. But in any case, if I go back to usually we would be working in real time, right? So that's how it would be. So let's go back to the customer center and we could do this again. So let's imagine another month passes and we go back into the sales order and we're like, okay, now let's make another invoice just for the, for the selected items. The second one, so boom, 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 just that one, okay. And so this is gonna happen on 09, uh, 20901, whatever, 27. So, and so what's, so this is going to do the same thing. So if I look at the journal entry, we're just going to do the same thing again. This is the second invoice. Invoice, let's say this was month one, month one, and month, and this is going to be month invoice in voice voice month two and so then once we'd have the same journal entry accounts receivable for the same amount 3771 income sales tax same thing same o same o 35 and i'm going to say we'll just say this is the same thing, negative sum of that. And then, so if I record that bit, then we've got the accounts receivable going up, which is the controversial thing here, because really the unearned revenue should be going down from just a debits and credit standpoint, but we'll add another journal entry to fix that. And then income is going up for the next month that has passed. And then sales tax, the liability is gonna go up. And then we're gonna add another journal entry to fix the fact that the accounts receivable, it should have decreased unearned revenue. So I'm gonna say unearned revenue is gonna be debited. And then the A to the R is gonna be credited. So that allows it to go in and out of the sub ledger 
for accounts receivable for the 71, 3771, 3771, double clicking the unearned rev and picking up that. So now I've got five, I think we had five months, four, three months left in there and then accounts receivable goes back down. Accounts receivable going up and down makes sense because then you would be able to see it going in and out on the sub ledger at that time. Although again, they add another account over here when they do it. So we're gonna, so what's this gonna do? That, that'll increase the, the accounts receivable, 3771. The other side's gonna go to income, 35, and then sales tax for the amount of 901. Then it's gonna make that journal entry to decrease the unearned, to decrease the liability and the other side going to accounts receivable, which you would think would be happening on 91, but it seems to be doing that not at the date of the invoice, but at the date of the current day it thinks it is, which is kind of the, an issue. Let's save it and close it and check it out. So the customer has available credits. Uh, credit, would you like to apply those credits? I'm gonna say yes again. So I'm gonna apply the credit out here. So we're gonna apply the credit. So so there it is. Is there anything I can change with the date? Date 9127. So so here's the date 73. So we're applying out that 37 prepayment. Okay, I'm gonna just say okay. Once you apply the available prepayment, this you won't be able to we'll create a journal entry for this transaction. Do not display this page. I'm gonna say okay. So now if I go in there, I'm gonna say invoice. It applied out the prepayment and it says it's, uh, so it says it's paid. That looks good. And we could have applied it out by saying apply prepayment. I don't see any way to uh, change the date of the journal entry as we do the transaction though. That's kind of an issue uh, or it could be if you're not working in real time or if you need to go back and do something. If, we're, if you're working in real time, that isn't gonna be an issue, but I would think they would tie the journal entry date to the date of the invoice, not the current date that the software thinks it's at. I would, I'm thinking they might pick up on that at some point and fix that because I would think that would be the case unless I'm missing something. But this would work if you're doing it in real time, it wouldn't be an issue if we weren't working a practice problem in the future. So in any case, if I go back on over here and I go into the A to the R, we see the invoice going up 3771. We see the other side going to the P and the L, the profit and the loss. So now it's September, there's the 35, that looks good. The other side, the sales tax going into the liability account, sales tax payable, sales tax payable. That looks properly done. And then we have the liability account going down, this added journal entry to do the liability account going down. So where's that of my unearned revenue? You did not earn that revenue. You did not earn that revenue. But see, the dates are messed up here, see, which is annoying. I'm a little frustrated by that. So then they're going, but it's going down now. You can see the process. And again, if we were in real time, it's picking up the current date uh, and, and, and it won't let me change it to uh, what, what would it be? I would think this would should be happening as of the invoice date which I said was what, 090127? 090127, it's doing all this stuff down here. Save it and close it. You can't do it, you can't do it. So annoying, annoying. So I think I feel like they should adjust the date to the journal entry date, uh, but Maybe maybe they'll uh, they'll pick up on that, or maybe I'm maybe I'm missing.